All right, and this is part two of our lesson on solving systems of polynomials. So let's identify what we're dealing with here. Um, this is quadratic, and we have another quadratic. So that means we're dealing with two parabolas. Okay, so maybe we're dealing with something like this, where we have uh, a parabola and another parabola. Okay, so this is a possible scenario, looking for maybe two intersections. Um, something like this, uh, we'll see. Now, the way that these are set up, um, Substitution is not looking like a good option. You know, if we try to get one variable by itself and subs substitute, it's looking ugly. Uh, however, look at how all the like terms are, are nice and lined up. Um, elimination is looking like a good option. Now, the key to elimination is finding opposites that cancel. Sometimes we have to multiply everything by something to make opposites that cancel. Um, and sometimes uh, we want two variables to cancel, so there's only one left. Um, this one is a little extra easy because uh, look at these. Those are already opposites that cancel, okay? And look at these, negative 2x and positive 2x. Those are also opposites that cancel. So, you know, elimination method is looking great for this uh, because the opposites are already there. So let's go ahead and do elimination method for sure. Okay, so if I go ahead and uh, put these together, um, combining like terms, these immediately cancel and these immediately cancel. So I have uh, 2y minus y, all right? So that's just y uh, plus 5 equals 0. So we can easily solve this for y by subtracting 5 from both sides. So that'll give me y equals negative 5. Okay, um, so we have this one y value. We need to find the x value that goes with it. So if I, you know, uh, imagine having a very small t-chart, okay, where we're talking about x and y, and we have our one y value of negative 5. The idea is, um, what's the x value that goes with this? okay or values hmm so um, the way you find the x values that go with this y value is uh, you take it and you plug it back into one of the original equations it doesn't matter which one just pick one alright uh, I feel like doing this in purple I'm gonna use the top equation here okay so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna substitute negative 5 for the y the y value so right here so that's going to leave me with x squared minus 2x plus 2 times negative 5 plus 2 equals 0. All right, no more y value, only x value. So I have x squared uh, minus 2x. Uh, 2 times negative 5 is negative 10 plus 2 equals 0. So that's x squared minus 2x minus 8. All right, just combining negative, two, uh, negative 10 plus 2 equals 0. So um, this looks like the type of thing that we factor all the time. So let's go ahead and factor this. Looking at that 8, I'm having thoughts of, um, OK, I'm looking at the 8, and I'm thinking it's either going to be 2 times 4 or it's going to be 1 times 8. Those are the possibilities. All right. So uh, x squared can only be x times x. Um, with the 8, keeping in mind that we're shooting now for a middle of uh, negative 2x. All right, that's what we want. Um, 2 and 4 is looking good. So let's go ahead and do the 2 and the 4. Remember, the key to factoring trinomials is inner plus outer must equal middle. Inner, I have 2x. Outer, I have 4x. Okay, and uh, that has to make negative 2x. So, um, if I do that, 
the signs, the signs. I need a positive 2 and a negative 4 in order to make negative 2x. So there's my positive 2 and there's my negative 4. Am I getting the negative 8 that I need? Sure, a positive times a negative is a negative. So this is the co correct factorization. Um, so we will continue to solve this by setting these factors equal to 0. Okay, so if I set x plus 2 equal to 0 and x minus 4 equal to 0. Subtracting 2 from both sides gives me x equals negative 2. And uh, adding 4 to both sides gives me x equals 4. Okay, um, so I've got these two x values, negative 2 and 4. Now I've got two x values and only one y value. So how do I deal with that? Um, well, the way I deal with that is um, the y value is going to serve for both x values. So uh, my, if my two x values are negative 2 and 4, okay, so I've got negative 2 and 4. Okay, my y value of negative 5 is going to serve f both x values. So from this, I have two points. I have negative 2, comma, negative 5, and I have 4, comma, negative 5. Okay, uh, let's check our answer by looking at the graph electronically. All right, let's see if we got the right answer. And it's always good to get the big picture. You know, what, what do these parabolas actually look like having these two intersection points? Let's make some connections. Uh, I'm going to try to do this on Wolfram Alpha. All right, so here I've typed it into Wolfram Alpha like this. Um, let's see what Wolfram gives me in return. OK. Interesting. Okay, so you can see the two parabolas, and uh, we have our two intersection points. All right, let's see if Wolfram agreed with our solution. Okay, so I see um, negative 2, comma, negative 5, and 4, comma, negative 5. Okay, so that's exactly what we got. So we've checked our answers, and it's nice to see the big picture of how it all actually went down. All right, let's take a look at number four. Um, this is linear, so of course uh, that's a line. Again, this is quadratic, so this is a parabola. All right, so in general, it's this type of situation that we're looking for. Okay. All right, but we'll see when we do the details. Um, when it's set up this way, um, I like to use substitution. So I've got y equals 1 half x minus 5 on the one hand. On the other hand, I've got y equals x squared plus 2x minus 15. Well, as you can see, when I do substitution, I like to write them side by side gives me a nice workspace uh, to organize my work. I'm going to go ahead and recommend that you do the same. All right, be like me. Um, so when you substitute, you take whatever that first variable is equal to, and you substitute it in the other equation for the same variable. So that's going to give me 1 half x minus 5 equals x squared plus 2x minus 15. Now, I'm, I'm not feeling this fraction, okay? It's making me nervous. So, what I do is, whatever's in the denominator, I multiply by that, all right? Of course, I have to multiply everywhere, so I'm gonna multiply by two on every term. All right, but the point is to cancel out the denominator by by fraction. So that's gonna give me x minus 10 
is equal to 2x squared plus 4x minus 30. All right, no more fraction. I can breathe a sigh of relief. Um, now, I see that I have two different kinds of x's. I have a quadratic term and a linear term. So I need to get 0 on one side and factor or something. So let's do that. And I'll do that by subtracting x from both sides. OK, I do have a like term there. Those will cancel out. I can also add 10 to both sides, like term it. And these will cancel out. So that's going to leave me with 0 equals 2x squared plus 3x okay, minus 20. Um, we are more comfortable with having 0 on the right. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this and put my 0 over here. I'm sure you don't mind. Uh, now, this looks like the type of thing we factor all the time. So we're not afraid of this. Okay, 2x squared can only factor as 2x times x, so that's great. Now 20, when I look at 20, I'm thinking of various options here. Um, 20 could be, let's see, either it's going to be 4 times 5, all right, or it could be 2 times 10, or it could be 1 times 20. All right, those are the three options. Now, um, let's just go in order. I like to start with the smaller numbers and then work my way up. So um, 4 times 5. Now, can you tell me why I will not waste my time putting the 4 here like this? GCF, people. Um, if there's no GCF in the original problem, there shouldn't be any GCF inside the parentheses. So I will not waste my time with 4 or 5. However, uh, 5, 4 may work. So remember, the key to factoring a trinomial is inner plus outer must equal the middle. All right, so we're shooting for a positive 3x. OK, um, now inner, inner I have 5x. Outer, I have 8x. Can I get a positive 3x out of this if I pick the signs right? Yes. If I have a negative 5 and a positive 8, that would make positive 3. OK, so there's my negative 5. And my positive 8 would come from having a 4, positive 4. Now, am I getting the negative 20 that I need? Yes. A negative times a positive is a negative. So this is factored correctly. OK, now let's uh, take these and set these factors equal to 0. OK, so I've got 2x minus 5 equals 0. And I've got x plus 4 equals 0. If I add 5 to both sides, uh, that gives me 2x equals Five. Okay, running out of space here. Um, but then I need to divide both sides by 2. Okay, so that gives me x equals 5 over 2. All right, and I'm just going to put it over here. x equals 5 over 2. Okay, because uh, here if I, whoops. If I subtract 4 from both sides, OK, then those cancel out. And I get x equals negative 4. So these are my two x values. Uh, to get the y values, so 5 over 2 and negative 4, um, we can come back to here. Now let's make a, a t chart. Slide over a little bit more. Um, I'm going to make my t chart now. All right, so I had a negative 4, and I had a 5 over 2. 
If I want the y values that go with these x values, I can use this equation. So um, this y value should equal 1 half times negative 4 minus 5. And this y value should equal 1 half times 5 over 2 minus 5. OK. Um, I'm just going to use a calculator for both of these. All right, so the first one is negative 7. All right, 1 half times 5 over 2 minus 5. Whoops. Okay, that's negative 15 over 4. Pretty weird, but what are you going to do? Okay, so that gives us our two solutions, and let's write them as ordered pairs. Negative 4 comma negative 7, and Five over two, comma negative fifteen over four. Okay, put a box around it. Put a bow on it. All right, so that's our final answer. Now um, let's electronically take a look at the graph of this situation uh, to check our answer and just to uh, get a look at the big picture out of curiosity. All right, here's how it looks when you type the system into Wolfram Alpha. I'm just hitting Enter. See what we get. OK, so it seems to have interpreted the information correctly. And here's the graph for us. OK, so you can see um, the parabola being intersected by this line. And we have our two intersection points here and here. So this one, um, let's take a look back. All right, so we had negative 4, negative 7. Actually, let's scroll down and just check our answers. OK, so negative 4, negative 7, and 5 over 2, negative 15 over 4. So Wolfram Alpha agrees with us, so that bodes well. OK, and uh, so this must be the, uh, the 5 over 2, comma, negative 15 over 4. Uh, must be this solution right here. All right. That is going to be enough for, for this video. We will pick up the next video. We will continue with problem number five. See you on the next video.